Hello and welcome to this Anova Systems breakout session on adding detail to your drawings with me Adam Rose. Within this video I'm going to show you some of the techniques you can use to clean up your drawings within SolidWorks. First of all I'll just switch over into the software and I'll just open up one of the recent documents I've got here. I'm going to create a file from this using the make drawing from part option from the file menu. I'll just choose my template and I'll move some drawing views into place. Now make sure you've got the auto stop projected view turned on and then it makes the, the creation of these drawing views a lot easier. So I've really quickly inserted the three drawing views here. I'm going to change the scale which is shown in this bottom right hand corner here. I can do that quite simply just by going to the right click menu and choosing properties. I'm going to switch this scale down to a slightly smaller drawing. Now we've got a bit more room to add in some dimensions onto this item. Now that I've done that, I might want to change the display style of some of these drawing views. If I select this drawing view over on the right here, I can adjust the display style over on the left here from using the parent style to showing the hidden lines within the drawing. Now you'll, you'll find on certain drawing views that this will make the item quite messy in appearance. Quite a nice way to deal with this as an issue is to right click and go to the properties menu on that particular drawing view. We can go on to show hidden edges and it allows me to go down into the drawing and pick out the items that I want to see and leave out those that I don't. So I first need to go back to my design tree then I can just filter down into the model, finding the features that I want to show and just selecting them. So having selected the items that I want to show, I'll click the apply button and click OK. And then we see the drawing view is a lot neater now. We're getting the detail that we want on there without any excess information that's clouding our vision. So now I've gone through the process of actually creating the drawing views. I'm going to go ahead and create one of the drawing views from the view layout tab. Within 2013, the insertion of section views has changed very slightly. We can still insert the horizontal or vertical section views. We've got the option to then go for different types of aligned aux or auxiliary section views as well. I'm gonna hover over my drawing view and with the auxiliary drawing view button selected, I can then just pick up on points within the model to rotate around and select the alignment for this item. So I've just highlighted the two points at the center of those circles. And if I hit the tick, I can project out straight from those two items. Having done that, I'm then going to flip the direction of this view by double clicking. We do have to make sure that we rebuild the drawing once we've done that. Then I can view this section view from the other direction. So having created the item, I'll then just move it into position and you'll find that sometimes the alignment of this will be locked to the original drawing view. We can quickly change this just by right clicking and going to the alignment options. I've broken the alignment and then I can just move it into position. Now obviously we're going to want to rotate this view around into place but we don't really know what angle it's placed at at the moment. One of the easy ways to rotate this view around into position is to select what you want to be a horizontal or vertical edge in the drawing view and then we can just go to the tools menu. I can rotate it round so that the edge I've selected will be horizontal. That quite nicely just brings the view round into position. It's not currently aligned with anything at the moment but I can add my own alignment into this view as well from the alignment options in the right click menu. So I'm going to align it horizontal by center. And you'll see now as I move this view around, it matches up quite nicely with the other views in the drawing. So having inserted those first items, I can then go ahead and add some dimensions into this drawing. Dimensions are all inserted from the annotations toolbar. I'm going to use the smart dimension first of all within this exercise. Under smart dimension, we can choose smart dimensioning like we would have in the model, or we can use the dim expert. Dim Expert is a great way to dimension up a model within your drawing. It allows me to select a datum within the drawing, which I can choose as a point. 
and then I just go through the item selecting where I want dimensions to be inserted and they'll be automatically placed onto your drawing. So I'll just go around the drawing view selecting different areas of the, the design to have those automatically detailed up. Selecting different arcs within here just gives me the radius or diameter of those. And I can finish off having done that just by hitting the tick. And then I can just move the items into position. So we just rotate the drawing views round to get them in place and make the drawing look a little bit neater. Some of the items you may have to just rotate right round to get in position. And I'll just shift some of the drawings dimensions up to get them out of place. So that drawing view now looks quite neat. One of the things you may want to do within this drawing, just to get it looking a little bit better, is to change the colour of some of these dimensions. We can do that by right clicking at the top toolbar and bringing up our line format. Line format is a toolbar which allows us to select a dimension and change the colour of it. I can change it from this grey which denotes that this dimension is a driven dimension to the standard black colour. Having inserted that onto the drawing, you know, we could do that for other dimensions. We can also use the format painter as well to copy that style across to other dimensions. So having used the format painter on there, I can also copy across other items within this drawing. I can select a dimension over here, for example, I can insert some kind of tolerance. By selecting the drop down list, there's a quite a wide variety of tolerances available. And then I just type in the value that I want to have in there. Having inserted that, you can also then change the colour of it. And then we can change and copy that style across using the Format Painter to other dimensions within the drawing. It's a really quick way of copying all the information across from one item to another. Having now inserted that on a number of dimensions, we're obviously going to want to get all the dimensions in this drawing inserting black automatically at some stage. We can do that as well using the Layers tab. If I right click at the top here, we can bring up the Layer Toolbar. This button allows me to go in and create new layers, and I'll do that now. If I click OK on this, it's created my new layer, and it's made sure that it's automatically set to black as it was by default. So having just created that layer, what I'm going to do now is go to my Options menu. Under Document Properties, I can then go down to Dimensions and I can set all of my dimensions to be automatically inserted onto that layer. So having copied that information across, any new dimensions we insert will automatically come onto that layer of dimension and automatically be inserted in black. And I'll do that now using the Smart Dimension tool. The rapid dimensioning icon that pops up in the graphics area just helps us to get the dimensions in place. Any of the dimensions that I've already inserted, I can quite quickly just highlight over those and just switch them onto that dimensions layer because they won't have been done by default. As soon as I do switch them onto that layer, they all show up in that black color as well. So now I've sorted out the dimensions for this drawing view in the bottom left, one of the things I may want to do is just insert some more detail onto the drawing with my view layout toolbar. I'm going to insert a broken out section view. Broken out section view by default will select the spline tool for the profile of this item. If I want to use a different profile, I can just go to my sketch toolbar and choose a different tool. So I'll hover over the drawing view and pick up a reference that I can use within this item. And then I can just draw out the shape of this particular broken out section view. And then if we go to the view layout toolbar, we just select broken out section view. And then I can define the depth of this item. Usually we can do that using the depth dimension just here. Or we can turn on the preview to have a look 
or what that's actually going to look like within the drawing. If we want this item to be quite precise, we can use the depth selection box, which allows me to select a reference within this drawing. Using a circular edge like this one will automatically bring that depth bar right into the middle of that arc, which is a great way of being able to get something right quite precisely in the middle of a model. So having inserted that broken out section view, I can then add some further dimensions based upon that. Using the rapid dimensioning tool where I need to. And then I can just add further dimensions onto other parts of the drawing just to finish it off. Okay, with with these dimensions inserted, I can then go a bit further and just add a bit more detail into the drawing using things like the whole callout tool, which allows me to automatically bring detail through from any hole wizard holes we've inserted. Having gone through all the examples in this drawing, what I'm going to do now is close it down and just have a look at another model. So the next model I'm going to open up is another recent document. It's this Weldments framework. One thing to note just before we do create a drawing from this is the fact that I've inserted some welds onto this and I've got my cut list already detailed up and you can do that just by clicking the update option from right click. So I'll go to file and make drawing from this part again and I'll use this drawing template. To insert the drawing views this time I'm going to use the standard three view button. Standard three, three view just inserts that front, top and right view that you want within most drawings. And then we can just drag that down into position and bring it around into place. So having got this item into position, I can then just use the smart dimension tool then to just get overall heights and widths of the dimension item that I'm looking to create. If we select any of these dimensions, we can make them inspection dimensions just by turning on this option on the left. So now having created that, I want to add in a bit more information about the actual weldment items that I've used in this particular model. And I can do that by using a table. From the annotations toolbar, drop down where it says tables and just select weldment cut list. We'll have to select a drawing view to base this on. And then we can specify the options. We just hit the tick and we can insert that wherever we want into the drawing. So having inserted those first items, we then may want to add some balloons that will bring in a bit more information relating to this table. We can do that quite easily just by selecting the auto balloon tool. You'll see the balloons will get inserted and they'll be inserted all over the drawing views. We can then use the options on the left to choose where the actual balloons are going to get placed within this drawing. I'm going to choose the align balloons to the left option and then I can just hit the tick. Now if you do want to move these balloons at all they will be inserted with magnet lines which means you can select any one of them and use the magnet lines to then rotate and move the dimensions into position. And if you make sure that the equal spacing option is turned on, on the left it means that if you change the size of that, that magnet line the balloons will automatically space out. So having shifted the items into position, I can then go ahead and insert some new columns into this table. I can do that just by the right click, insert column right or left, and we can just simply click at the top to choose a property for this. And I'm going to go for the angle of the cut on the end of these weldment items. I'll do the same for that second one. So basically now we've got the angles at both ends of that weldment item. Bringing myself back out to view the whole drawing. The next thing I want to insert is some detail relating to 
the welds that I've already inserted within this model. To insert those, because they're already inserted in the model, we can use model items, which will insert anything from the design. I'll turn off import into all views and I'll change it to entire model for the selection. I'm then going to go down and select anything relating to weld. So I can go on and turn in and bring in the weld symbols and then caterpillar and end treatment option. I'll turn off dimensions and I'll then select the drawing views that I want these to be inserted onto. I can then just hit the tick and these the weld symbols will be automatically inserted into the drawing. We don't need all four of these. We can insert and just use one of them. But you should see the end treatments inserted on these edges just here. We can make changes to this symbol just to specify the fact that there are four just by double clicking. We insert the item and then gives us a bit more detail on the drawing. Having done that, I can then insert another table which this time I'm going to insert a weld table. A weld table is great because it just allows me to select one of the drawing views and detail that drawing view up for the welds that it's got. You see I'll just have to resize some of the tables that I've already got to fit this in. I can just left click at the bottom of this table just to bring it into position. The welds table that can then fit into the other corner. Currently it's not using the document font but I can turn that option on to then bring the font size down which will just fit it in a bit better within this table. So having inserted these first items, the next thing I'm going to want to do is to insert some more drawing views within this document. I'm going to insert another section view using the section view tool. This time I'm going to insert a vertical section view and we can pick up a reference from the document again. Just drawing the line down into position. We can hit the tick or we can click edit sketch to then edit how far this section view is actually going to go through the model. I'm going to bring it to about this length. I'll hit the tick on the right hand side here and that will create a section view which you'll see will only create a partial section cut. Now rather than breaking the alignment with this one I can use the control key on the keyboard just to drag this round into position without having the alignment locking me down at all. I'll flip it so the view is going the other direction and just rebuild. I want to increase the scale of this particular view. We can do that quite easily by selecting it and going on this options on the left hand side. I'm going to use a custom scale of 1 to 1 on this particular item. Let's increase the size of this drawing view quite considerably. What I'm going to do now is to turn on the option on the left hand side at the top which only shows the cut faces which obviously gets rid of all of the information that we don't want to see. I only want to see the actual profile itself. I don't need both sides of the profile, so what I can do on this particular drawing view is I can insert a sketch over the top of one of the views, make sure it stays selected, and then I can just go to Crop View from the View Layout Toolbar. That crops the view down to a much smaller size, which will then fit a lot better in my drawing. We may then want to go into this drawing in a bit more detail and insert some of the weldment items on their own. There's a few ways of doing this. The first one I'm going to show is to use model view. We can select model view in the model we want to use and then just use select bodies and SOLIDWORKS will allow us to individually select the body we want to insert on its own. We can then choose the drawing view by selecting the view on the left. I'm going to choose left view just here and obviously we're going to want to increase the scale of this particular item which again we can do that on the left hand side so this item now looks a lot better we may also want to include the scale of this particular drawing view like we have on the left here we can do that by going to the options menu under document properties down to where it says view labels and we've inserted an orthographic view. So if I show the labels, so the scale, if the scale differs from the sheet scale, it will indicate to us what scale this drawing view is. With this first item inserted, there is another way of inserting these drawing views and that's to go to insert drawing view and select the relative to model option. I can then switch back to the design by 
hitting control and tab and select the particular item I want to use. I'm going to choose selected body so I can just isolate one of the individual items. And then I need to choose what will be the front view in my particular drawing view that I'm inserting and what will be the right view, which I'm going to use this face here. If I hit the tick, I get the item automatically brought into my drawing. And I can bring that to a similar scale as I had in the last view. So having inserted this item, this isn't a standard orthographic view, so we don't automatically get the scale inserted. We can do that quite easily from the annotations toolbar by inserting a note. I'm going to type in scale. And then if we use link to property, the button on the left here, we can link it to the actual scale in this document. I'm going to select the component to which the annotation is attached. And then if we drop down this list, you'll see that view scale is the option right at the bottom. If we click OK, that will insert the scale of this actual drawing view so that if it changes, this note will also automatically update. It's parametrically linked to the design. So just finishing off this model, I may want to just insert some dimensions and I can use the Smart Dimension tool to do that. Inserting Smart Dimensions is very simple. One of the dimensions you may not know about is the fact we can select a radius like this one, select the two endpoints either side, and we can actually get the arc length out of an item. We just finished the dimensions off just with a few more. And just bring our notes down appropriately. So we now finish that drawing off. Again, I'll close the item down and I'll finish the drawing. In this third part of the video, I'm going to show some of the tools you can use when working with assemblies within drawings in SolidWorks. I'll just open up this assembly model and then using the same process I have done in the past few drawings, I'm just going to go to File and make Drawing from Assembly. So having created the drawing, one of the first things we're going to do is to insert a view from the view palette over here on the right hand side. I'll insert a right view onto my drawing, just drag it into position. And then because I've got Auto Start Projected View turned on, I'll get some drawing views projected out from that automatically. I do want to scale this drawing up slightly because it is still a bit small at the moment. And I'll just scale that up with the commands I was using earlier on, that properties menu. I've just got some slight adjustments of the position of these views just to get them into position. And I can change things like the display style of this view in the top right hand corner. This assembly has quite a range of movement and I want to show how this wheel spinning will affect the rest of the model. I can do that by using an alternate position view. If I select alternate position view and then click on the assembly model, I can then insert a new configuration onto the design. It'll take me into the assembly and then I can just rotate this wheel to show the range of movement. If I hit the tick, it takes me back into the drawing and now that range of movement will have been overlaid over the top of the view that I've got. One of the things I want to do in this top right hand corner is to show the view through the design to some of the internal components. I'm going to do that by opening the assembly up from the right click. Within the assembly design, I'll then create a new configuration. And I'll just call it section. I'm going to create a partial section through the assembly model so that then I can choose which components will be sectioned and which won't. One of the first things I'll do with this section view is just to suppress all of the hardware within the design, which I've actually just included within one folder. I'm then going to just draw a sketch within the model. And I can do that by just selecting one of the faces and starting my sketch. So in this model, I'll draw out a rectangle over my design and I'll just hover over it in order to pick up a reference. Now we can dimension this item if we want to. 
Because of speed, I'm just going to leave it how it is for the moment. I'll exit out of this item and then I'll create a cut from this. And I can do that by going to the assembly toolbar and using the extrude cut option. If I set it to through all, it'll cut through the entire design and I can use the feature scope at the bottom to allow me to select which items will be cut and which won't. So I can just click on the items in the graphics area to select them. So we selected all the items that I want to cut through, I hit the tick. We should see through the design that the internal components are visible, leaving only the external parts cut away. Having created that configuration, I can just select this view and then apply that section configuration onto the design so I can see it in this top right hand corner. I'm going to create a second page within this drawing. On this second sheet, I'll copy one of the existing views that I've already got within the drawing. I'm going to copy this view just here, drawing view one, and I can do that just by holding the control key down and dropping it into sheet two. That drops it just straight into position and we can remove any alternate positions from that and then just put it into whatever drawing view we want. I'll move it out into this corner. Now it, on this page, I want to insert an exploded view. So I'll, again, I'll go back into the design to do that. The first thing I'll do is to switch back to my default configuration and then create a new configuration. I'm going to call this explode. Within this design, I'll click the explode view button and then I can quite quickly add an exploder view into the model by using some of the options down the left. If I untick the option on the left and then select this subassembly, I can reuse the subassembly exploder that that's already created. So I'll drag it out into position and select it again and click reuse subassembly exploder to insert that explosion into my design. Selecting other components and then ticking the tick box on that says auto space after drag allows me to move the components out into position and then have them space themselves automatically. I can reduce that spacing just by dragging the components into place. I can do the same procedure on other parts of the design, just windowing around objects, deselecting those I don't want, and then again just dragging the items into position. Reducing the spacing just helps me get it into place and I'll select those remaining components that I haven't got so far. Deselect those items I don't want and then moving these items into position again we get them auto spaced. Hit the tick once you're done and we can move ourselves around into an orientation that we want to view this in within the drawing. I can save this orientation away so I can use it within the drawing if I want to by hitting the space bar. I'll click new view, I'll name this item explode and then I can use that within my drawing. So within the drawing now I'll activate my explode configuration and I'll tick the tick box to allow me to see it. Then I'll just bring it into the orientation that I created by clicking the explode tick box. You'll see I need to scale the item down very slightly so I can go into this drawing and just adjust the properties. That just brings it down to a more manageable size. The next thing I'm going to do within this drawing is just to insert a bill of materials and I can do that from the annotations toolbar and tables. I'll select the drawing view and I'll insert a top level only bill of materials. I can bring this into position and delete any columns I don't want out of here. I want to reference this table now with some balloons, I can do. On the annotations toolbar, I'll click the auto balloon tool and I select the drawing view to then have my balloons automatically inserted around the edge. By using this layout, I can automatically get the items 
are positioned quite neatly. And we can also order them sequentially, which will also make them look quite good. So I'll hit the tick, and then I can just drag my assembly view into position, and just adjust the spacing of these items using the magnet lines like we were using earlier on. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the kind of things you can do with an assembly drawing. Thanks very much for watching.